Hi, welcome to day two of the unit one control assignment for criminology. Okay, now um, today is the five hour exam and this is really, really hard going from the point of view that you've got a lot to do and you've really got to try and maximise your time on the sections with most marks. Okay, I'm going to start with 2.1 and 2.2. Now 2.1 I think is the most tricky of all the write-ups because I think it's a really difficult thing to compare different campaigns, okay, and sort of make some sort of judgement. 2.2 is much more straightforward, but I would stress that both of these are um, about uh, your skills of analysis and evaluation. You don't want to be describing too much. You want to be sort of talking through the consequences, the impact, the strengths and weaknesses, similarities and differences, that sort of thing, because that's what's going to get you into top band for most of these. Okay, so if you've got a good set of notes and you have, you know, filled out all the charts and all the tables and done the practice write-ups, then you won't have too much difficulty. But like I say, I think 2.1 in particular is is the trickiest of these two. Okay, so 2.1, you're looking at spending about 45 minutes on this section, okay? Um, so it's really quite significant. Now you can use any types of campaigns. You could use Brexit or uh, the pro-European. Pro uh, you could use a uh, Scottish referendum. Um, you could use firework campaigns. You know, you can literally use any type of campaign. You could use the current COVID one about um, um, whatever it is, you know, how effective is that? Um, you know, keep space, wash your hands and cover your face. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be a crime uh, crime campaign, okay? Um, so you're looking at a campaign for change. And say what that change is. Are, you know, are the campaigners looking to get a change in the law, change in the funding, change in police priorities or change of a policy in an institution? Are you just trying to inform people or are you trying to change their behaviour? Are you, get, are you trying to get them to, to change their behaviour in a sense you're trying to get them to report a crime? Because, you know, one of the big things about this, this unit is, you know, how much crime goes unreported for whatever reasons. So what type of change are you going to try and do? Now, I'd suggest you have at least four real campaigns to be able to compare. And unfortunately, it's, you know, my face is now eviscerating the most important part of this, but you must include your own campaign, your own made up campaign. And I know that's really tricky and a bit false and a bit mad, but you've got to try and say how effective your campaign is in comparison to all the other campaigns. OK, so let's imagine your campaign has been a roaring success. You know, what makes your campaign similar and different to other types of campaigns? OK. So, like I say, you know, you don't want to be describing too much. Take it for read that everyone knows what Sarah's, Sarah's law is all about or, um, you know, or um, Megan's law on what, it, on what it was based or Snowdrop campaign or whatever ones you are using, okay? And what you want to be writing about is the strengths and weaknesses of campaigns. You want to be looking at the similarities or differences between campaigns. Now, the way to do this, I think, is to sort of essentially, you know, Think about four subheadings, okay? Now, you did a big chart in your lessons on this, and if you use that chart effectively, you should be able to see the similarities and differences, the strengths and weaknesses quite easily. So, for example, what, what was the background to a campaign? Why did a campaign start? So, for example, in the case of Sarah's Law, you know, it, it started because of a terrible tragedy, the killing of a, of a young girl by a, a known paedophile. Um, in the case um, Anne Ming's double jeopardy law, again, her daughter was killed, and so therefore she campaigned to get a change in the law. So, you know, those campaigns started for that reason. But if you compare that to the upskirting campaign, well, the upskirting campaign started because a woman was upskirted, complained about it, and there was no law had been broken because the law didn't exist. So she campaigned for, for that particular type of legal change. Then you are saying... Um, Again, what type of change was it trying to achieve? So a change in the law or a change in procedure. So if you look at the hate crime campaign, 
it's not so much trying to introduce hate crime because it already exists but it's trying to get people to report hate crime okay so uh, that's really important okay um the sophie lancaster campaign is uh, her fan the foundation set up in her name again the, you know the background is she was tragically killed and her mother is as has set this up but they're trying to campaign to have um lifestyle choices like being a goth included in the hate law um characteristics now they may not have been too successful in getting that change in the law but they've certainly been hugely successful in terms of advertising um, tolerance and anti-hate strategies so you know when it comes to the final category of how successful are they you know they've been partially successful so you know again you can begin to see how complicated this is because i keep veering off and talking about different things but you're talking about background how did the campaign start what type of change are they trying to bring about what methods okay so you know again don't describe too much but say what methods were used now something like sarah's law because it was over 20 years ago there was the internet didn't really exist for online petitions or anything like that whereas uh, the upskirting campaign it was an online petition but sarah's law you know caught the attention of the news of the world and um, you know the news of the world got behind it as a, a very successful campaigning method so um so it is important you you recognize that and you don't necessarily need to have um you know back in the day you didn't you didn't have access to the internet it didn't exist therefore they used different methods but you know it didn't necessarily mean to say the campaigns were any less successful okay so good luck with that but it is quite a tricky write-up so go in prepared and be able to do that okay now 2.2 is much more straightforward but again, you might want to make sure you are not describing too much, but you're coming up with lots and lots of evaluations. Now, you're going to spend about 60 minutes on this section. It's worth 15 marks. And I think this is quite an easy 15 marks to try and get. It's certainly getting into the top band. OK, so I think you should have at least five different media types and at least two examples for each media type that you choose okay now again you can use any type of campaign you don't have to link it to your own campaign or link it to a crime campaign and again you're making a judgment as to towards the overall impact and effectiveness of this type of media okay so for example if you were going to choose something online um, you know obviously they've got a very wide audience uh, people can view things really really quickly but if you you know if you have any type of blog or or blog attached then that can very quickly be trolled and taken over by you know people that have got very different types of messages and you know that could be you know very negative as a form of um, media campaigning okay um, and again, you know what makes for an effective, um, effective website. You know what makes for an effective uh, campaign. You've looked at lots of those examples, okay? So use those examples in your write-ups. You know, again, you think of the visuals involved in websites and the visuals involved in leaflets. So again, how effective are those visual impacts? You don't want them to be too graphic and horrible because you know people will just be switched off by them. But equally. You want to uh, make the point that you know you've got to capture people's imaginations i think the best way to do this is to use the, the examples we have been working through but ultimately does the media type that you are using does it reach the right audience does it bring about the aims of the campaign okay now i've just listed here um, all of the different types of media um, that you could be utilizing um, and you know like i say choose wisely choose the ones which are easy to write about which you've got lots of examples for use the ones we used in the lesson okay and for 2.1 and 2.2 i would urge you you know do look at the textbook there's lots of really good ideas in there but don't copy it out okay if you copy you're going to get no marks okay so good luck with that everybody